You only need to know me. I will be the one. Peace is likely the last great mystery of the entire series. With everything going on in the current storyline, the Egghead Island arc coming to an end soon, it's worth looking ahead beyond whatever arc comes next. Beyond Elbaf, the land of the giants. Beyond Laugh Tale, it's worth looking forward toward what happens after the Strahets reach that final island and ask yourself what do you think will really happen after the One Piece is found? A prelude to that final war, yes. But for this video, let's also consider everything the One Piece can do, what it is, and what it is for. Why that treasure is so desired, but also feared. Based on some quick research that I did, the portrayal of a great treasure depends on the cultural, historical, and literary context of the narrative. The most common type of treasure comes in the form of valuable materials like gold, silver, gemstones, and precious metals for their brilliance and rarity. Some treasure is sought after for its mystical or magical properties. Treasure that grants special powers, immortality, or the ability to influence the world. Treasures may have symbolic importance representing a nation's history, cultural heritage, or a major event. Some treasure is depicted as hidden or lost to time. Buried riches accompanied by a treasure map, clues and riddles to add an element of mystery and adventure, the solving of a long-awaited surprise. In other stories, great treasures have guardians and challenges to get there. The treasure is protected by a person, a mythical creature, traps or powerful beings, and I've long believed that just as Whole Cake Island placed its focus on Sanji and his Vinsmoke family, and the land of Wano gave some major screen time to Zoro and his own lineage, and Elbaf will likely provide some long-awaited character development to Usopp. The journey to Laugh Tale for the One Piece will follow this particular plot of great treasure, as Nami will have to overcome the obstacle of the sea. The very ocean and other challenges stemming from the tumultuous weather might require Nami's abilities as a navigator, setting aside whatever creatures, guardians, or pirates that might also stand in the Straw Hat's way there. But great treasures are also known for having curses, bringing misfortune or doom to those who possess or seek them. It does not appear as if this was the case for Roger and the Roger pirates that joined him on Laugh Tale, but who knows? It's debatable as to whether Roger actually found the One Piece treasure, or whether he simply learned what it was. But as Roger said himself to Rayleigh, they were too early. Maybe too early to actually use the One Piece, even if they did find it. If using the One Piece, taking that treasure all the way to the very end, finishing the story, so to speak, is what Roger meant when he said one day someone would surpass him go even further beyond. In other stories, treasure doesn't have to be materialistic. Treasure can also hold sentimental value, like a family heirloom or a lost love letter. Some treasure is legendary, items with mythical origins often tied to ancient gods or powerful artifacts that may have a profound impact on the world within the story. And finally, some authors use great treasures for the purpose of redemption or transformation. Treasure with a transformative power where the pursuit of treasure can lead to a personal shift or change for the characters involved. The treasure becomes a means to a greater end. And so, for those of you that have made it this far into the video, I think all of these aspects of treasure, as written across various tales, give us an idea as to what Oda has planned for when the One Piece is finally revealed. So, we are first introduced to the One Piece in Chapter 1. The story of One Piece begins with the treasure it is named after. The narrator tells us that There was once a man named Gold Roger. He had fame, power, and wealth. 
beyond your wildest dreams. A man that had taken everything in this world. Before they hung him from the gallows, these were the final words he said. My treasure is yours. Search for it. I left everything I own in one piece. Essentially, this dying man told the world that it could have his fortune, something that even Roger, a man said to have acquired all the world, had to offer. Something that even Roger placed a great value on. One piece of you! There is perhaps a hint in the narrator's words that whatever the one piece is, it can make you rich, famous, and powerful. Or just maybe it is something that defies this common understanding of a great treasure. As mentioned earlier, the One Piece would be something more than wealth, fame, and power. It could be something that fundamentally changes the world as we know it. This falls in line with Whitebeard's final words, coincidentally mirroring the death of Roger and an affirmation of the existence of the One Piece. That the One Piece is real and how the world will be shaken to its core when that treasure is found. One Piece And so, why will the world be shaken to its core? Should we take this literally as if something about the core of the Earth or the planet itself will change by way of finding and using the One Piece? I've heard about the pole shift theory for those of you that know about it. We are currently seeing rising sea levels on the planet that may need to be reset. And so whatever the One Piece is, what if Roger simply laughed at a message Joy Boy left behind to accompany the One Piece treasure? Maybe instructions for how to use it. Whatever it is. For all we know, the One Piece could be a big red button that Luffy being the idiot he sometimes is would press as the rest of the crew tries to stop him. And this button causes the world to reset. Turns the world upside down. But this could simply mean the world will change in a substantial fashion for some other reason. The existence of something that shocks the collective conscience of the world. So, if we place ourselves as readers into the One Piece story, what could possibly blow our minds such that we would never be the same or never see the world the same way again? Also, Usopp jokes or tells a lie in chapter 507 that he has a disease that will kill him if he finds out about the One Piece. Usopp's lies tend to come true in one way or another. So what if after the One Piece is found, Luffy catches an incurable disease? As I mentioned earlier, in some stories a legendary treasure curses you as much as it rewards you. The gift and the curse as it's called, no different than a devil fruit the treasure of the sea devil that blesses you with power but punishes you by taking away your ability to swim. Maybe Usopp's lie is hinting that the One Piece will come with a cost, a curse once Luffy finds and uses it. But of course, that's never stopped him before, especially if the One Piece will bring about Luffy's dream. He's always been willing to die for it. Why else would Luffy or any of the Straw Hats have come to the New World? And Luffy getting sick would give Chopper a chance to fulfill his own dream. To become the greatest doctor in the world. By proving no disease is incurable. Anyways, I'll be honest and admit that there is no clear answer as to what the One Piece is. But it's still worth considering everything the One Piece treasure can do. Or might be able to do. I believe Arthur from the Library of O'Hara on Twitter and YouTube recently touched on an idea that I had only seen a few others mention on social media. Arthur dropped a video claiming that the One Piece is going to be revealed as Binks Sake or a manga storybook named after Binks Sake that tells the story of Joy Boy and in that way Luffy. As Arthur points out that the One Piece treasure is a funny story in his view because it made Roger laugh. I didn't watch the full video so I'm not sure how it rationalized that a storybook could tell a story that hasn't happened yet. But giving this idea some of my own thoughts, I've stumbled on some original conclusions that are kind of mind-blowing. So think of my ideas as supporting evidence with a twist. So the One Piece treasure being a manga or storybook called Bink Sake in Arthur's view. A better idea, I think, would be if the One Piece treasure is actually a storybook called 
One Piece. On the 18th of November, I posted this on Twitter. If the One Piece treasure is a manga or a story about Luffy, then the reader already found it. When Whitebeard said, the One Piece is real, he wasn't joking. Oda was being literal about this literal statement. The One Piece is real. You're holding it. Reading it now. Essentially, when we reach Laugh Tale alongside Luffy, when the One Piece is finally in his hands, it will also be in our hands at the exact same moment. The One Piece being a story for all of us to share. A story we have already shared with each other. If it tells the story of Luffy's Joy Boy's life. But I'm sure you can already see the problem with the idea. While I like where Arthur is going with its significance, I don't see how this manga could know the future, much less cause the world to be shaken to its core. So let's figure that out now. If the One Piece is a story that tells of Luffy's life, then either the person that wrote it had some insane future sight, or it's better to view it as a book that can answer anything you ask it. A book that can answer anything, reveal anything, predict anything, is a power that could change the world. If information is what the world government fears, forbidden knowledge. Kazuki Odin accompanied Roger to Laugh Tale and learned everything as well. Odin knows what the One Piece is. He knew it as he died, as he spoke of the return of Joy Boy to Wano. The heroes that would save Wano from Kaido. Whitebeard even mentions a prophecy of the man Roger was waiting for that would carry the weight of history on his shoulders to change this world. Could it be that they all were simply referring to what the Poneglyphs reveal? Or is it something they learned on Laugh Tale after finding the One Piece? Again, if the One Piece is a story, a book that tells the story of the world, its past and future, somehow, the story of Luffy's life, Joy Boy's life, akin to a prophecy, a story that somehow came from the present to arrive in the past, or somehow came from the past to arrive in the present, or however Oda makes sense of time in the One Piece world. What Roger said about Joy Boy's treasure being a tale full of laughs, a funny story. Roger basically told us what the treasure is then, that just maybe what he was holding was beyond his wildest dreams, something that made him wish he had been born in the era he was reading about. Instead of reading history and wishing you had been born in the past, maybe wishing instead that he had been born in the future, in the timeline of Monkey D. Luffy. If the One Piece treasure is a story, this story might have come about in numerous ways. Dreams are important to the story of One Piece, after all. And so maybe the original Joy Boy dreamt of a very accurate future that included Luffy, that has now come to pass. Maybe the One Piece, if a story, is a story that is still writing itself. Maybe at the time, Roger only got to read a few chapters of this story. But it didn't reveal everything there is to know about Luffy and all that Luffy had done up till now. Or maybe I should get away from this time loop before I confuse you and myself any further because it's really making my head spin. Or maybe Luffy somehow travels to the past at the end of One Piece to continue his adventure. The wish that Roger had to have been born in Joy Boy's era. To see that crazy world that the original Joy Boy lived in. Maybe Luffy somehow travels to the past and leaves the chronicles of his own journey behind as a message to the future. And so the time loop continues. Some other supporting evidence for the One Piece being a story, the story of One Piece, comes from this. Going back to chapter 1, the introduction of the narrator, the very first voice we hear. As far as we know, the narrator's voice belongs to someone that is not in Oda's story. This narrator is not a One Piece character. And so, the narrator is no different than someone reading a story. The story of One Piece from afar. Like a father reading a bedtime story to their child at night. About some goofy pirates and a hero named Joy Boy that saves them. From a nightmarish world. Looking back at all the times the narrator's voice makes an appearance, you have to ask who the voice of this narrator belongs to. Will they ever be identified? 
Is it Joy Boy himself? Is it Ichiro Oda? Does it even matter? The existence of this narrator is something Oda draws attention to on rare occasion in the story, especially with these specific narrator text boxes. We see this again in chapter 100 and the introduction of Monkey D. Dragon as he recalls chapter 1 and Roger's execution alongside the last words that Roger spoke as he walked to the executioner's stand. Roger's words appear in a similar style to that of the narrator from chapter 1, as if Roger had become the narrator himself. In death, Roger had become a part of the story, a story to accompany our drinks, as if Dragon was recalling a chapter from a book, a page from the story, the quote of his favorite character. Chapter 100. The legend begins. The story begins. A story passed down via destiny, inherited will, and dreams. And the story connection goes deeper when you take a look at the end of Dres Rosa in Chapter 800. The narrator at Dres Rosa's end mentioning a story as he describes a great incident of historic proportions being caused by Luffy's Grand Fleet in the future. The narrator saying that for the moment, this is a story no one yet knows about. In this way, the narrator sounds like someone reading a story to us. Imagine if the One Piece manga was the One Piece treasure, but instead the One Piece manga was a book. A novel that had no pictures, just words describing the entire One Piece story. And so in this moment, at the end of Dres Rosa, the narrator was speaking like someone who had not yet got into that chapter of the book. Or, the narrator was speaking akin to someone that could not read that passage yet, because it was a story that had yet to be written. Luffy's life, Joy Boy's life, had yet to reach that page. Like Roger on Laugh Tale, we readers were too early, too early to read that part of the tale. It would take several more chapters until that part of the book was ready. During Wano, we get another reference to a story, as Wano begins but also as it ends. One Piece Chapter 960, the narrator's voice returns to describe the lush scenery of a land that introduces Kozuki Odin, and the narrator tells us that this is a story of Wano. From a time when life was still abundant, Almost as if One Piece is a story within a story that is full of stories. I talked about how this could be possible a while ago. Does the One Piece have the power of prophecy? The power to answer any question? Or was it simply written by a man, Joy Boy, documenting a wild dream of the future that he had? A story about Joy Boy or Luffy's life? During Wano, Kazuki Odin mentioned a story to be passed down that his death and there in his life would become a story to accompany our drinks. And just as he died with a smile, the will of D, perhaps, inherited will, the inheritance passed down in tales from generation to generation to the next. No different than the story of Joy Boy. His story and the will of D are two things that Imu and the world government despises. History and will are a threat to his reign. History containing the word story in it because it is a story and we pass on our will by way of stories as well. And recently the Gorosei Saturn was revealed to have ordered the removal of Kuma's free will. Imu and the Gorosei regularly erasing history and enslaving the world. They don't want people to be free. They don't want this story, One Piece, to be read. Maybe this will one day hold true for our real world. I don't know if One Piece is currently banned anywhere, but I wouldn't be surprised if Oda felt this was a story that would eventually be forbidden to be read. Oda's foreshadowing is crazy like that. When Roger died, he said he left everything he owned, everything he was, everything he had acquired over the long journey of his life in one piece. Almost as if his life was made of gold. Gold Roger had become a part of the treasure itself. Another chapter in the long-running series known as One Piece. A treasure, a story, to be shared with the world. But if any of this ends up being true, it makes sense why Luffy was not awake to hear about the One Piece. 
why Luffy was knocked out when White Beard revealed that the one great treasure was in fact real, or why Luffy was not around to hear of Odin's journey alongside Roger and their discovery of Laugh Tale. Luffy told Rayleigh that he didn't want to know where that treasure is. Luffy didn't want to know if it was even real. Luffy, essentially, did not want to be spoiled, for that would make for a boring story, a boring adventure, akin to spoiling the contents of a book. And just like Luffy, while some of us do read spoilers, we don't actually want to know how the story ends or what the One Piece is. We'd much rather read this story ourselves and discover the answer along the way. So again, Luffy not wanting to know fits the idea of the One Piece being something revelatory. And if he were to learn that it was a story telling of his own life and adventures, that is something that would definitely spoil his journey. If I could give you a book that told you everything that would happen, or a book that could answer any question, what would you use it for? What would you do with it? The One Piece story we are reading together now is a story questioning the meaning of freedom, one that can change people's minds and so free will. Prophecy coincides with destiny, and mankind questions whether he is truly free if everything is predetermined. So what if the One Piece treasure, instead of being a story about Luffy, is instead a book that predicts the future? Whatever you ask, it will answer. Knowledge is a dangerous power, it is transformative, something that could allow you to acquire everything in this world beyond wealth and fame. What would someone like Roger ask if he had this power, this book in his hands? Roger, a man that was dying. I think Roger would ask about the future he was going to miss. For a man so keen on adventure would surely want to know about the future he was missing out on. What happens decades from now when I'm dead and gone? And so, what would Luffy ask this fortune-telling book, if that's what the One Piece is? Maybe how to bring about the world he desires. After all, we owe everything in this world to desire. A book that answers our desires could tell Luffy how to make his dream come true. Perhaps when you first hold up the book, it contains the previous story that was written, or the previous question that was asked. And so Luffy would see what Roger saw of himself. Maybe someone else found this book in the past, before Roger did. Before or after the previous Joy Boy did. Maybe that person was Imu Narona, and it was used to make Imu the king of the world. To fulfill Imu's desires, before it was lost during the Void Century. Ichiro Oda told us that the One Piece is for sure a physical object. Or rather, Ichiro Oda himself confirmed in an interview with Momoko Sakura that the One Piece is not something like the journey itself was the real treasure or the friends we made along the way, and that it is in fact a physical reward. But a physical reward could mean just about anything. The One Piece itself could be something that brings about that physical reward, for example, the book that I mentioned. But when we look at Roger's words on Laugh Tale, Roger mentioned a wish that he had, and I couldn't help but think about Aladdin, the lamp and the genie that could grant any wish. What if the One Piece can make any wish, any dream come true? Wealthy, famous, or powerful, a dream to be the king of the world, or Roger's wish to have been born in Joy Boy's era. What if this wish was granted? What if the reason Roger was so confident that he wasn't going to die was because he knew his wish would come true? Or maybe it's because Roger knew he would live on another way, as a story of his own. But regardless of what the One Piece is or what it can do, during Marineford, Whitebeard tells us that this is a story from long ago. A story that foretells of the day that treasure is found, and thereafter, how the world will be shaken to its core, that this would begin a war that would engulf the entire world. Whitebeard tells Sengoku 
that the world government is afraid of this coming war just as Shanks tells Greenbull at the end of Wano that the world government is afraid of the coming new era, inherited will, the destiny of an age, and the dreams of its people, things that will never cease to be, a story of a coming age that cannot be stopped. The Marine Ford War might have been a foreshadowing of the final war of One Piece, how the story ends, turning the world upside down. For example, maybe instead of Ace being captured, the battle for the One Piece results in Luffy being captured and the entire world, all the allies Luffy made along the way, come to his rescue. Or just as Mihawk told us during Marine Ford, Luffy possesses the most dangerous ability, the power to bring both friend and foe to his side willingly, a conqueror that does not need to conquer, a king that doesn't want to rule anything, is the most deserving of all to sit on the empty throne a common trope in literature, for it is empty for a reason. The world should not have a ruler, a reminder of Luffy's answer to Silver's Rayleigh about what Roger had achieved, that what the Grand Line had in store for him was beyond his imagination. Luffy's enemies will be strong. Can he control? Can he conquer? This wild sea. And Luffy tells us, just as Roger told the Golden Lion Shiki, decades ago, that he had no desire to conquer anything, that to be a king, the pirate king, is to simply be the freest man on the sea. In reality, Luffy is the most deserving to sit where Imu is currently sitting. The war that he wages after the One Piece is found won't be to conquer the world, but to set it free. A dream everyone can share in, this theory being one of the oldest One Piece theories out there. But combined with everything else mentioned in this video, the notion of a story within a story containing many stories. In the original manga, Roger's final words in the term One Piece is often accompanied by an additional string of text, translating roughly to the great Hitosanagi treasure. Hitosanagi no Dai Hiho. The exact meaning of Hitosanagi has not yet been clarified and there are three possible readings into it based on what I read on the wiki that it should be read as a more or less literal Japanese translation of in one piece or that it should be read as a phrase roughly translating to the rope linking all men or that it should be read as Hitosu Nagi or a phrase roughly translating to one sea at peace but the rope linking all men in that way a story that unites all of us. A story about freedom, wherein freedom is the rallying cry that links everyone together. A story as old as time, the prelude, the first chapter, and the last, enduring into the epilogue, it will never cease to be. This world, this story of ours began without a ruler, and it will end that way. Possibly with Luffy destroying not just the red line and the barrier that symbolically divides us, but destroying the empty throne as well. If there shouldn't be a king of the world, then there shouldn't be a throne either. Taking a page from Game of Thrones, all that will remain thereafter is an ocean, one sea at peace, the all blue that connects all of us together. The ending of the story then is the treasure Luffy might be after, the book containing the answer, the how-to manual to his and Roger's dream. The dream Roger was not able to achieve because he was too early, the passage he was unable to read or write himself, one sea at peace, the perfect ending to a journey Roger could not finish, but Luffy will. One pirate completing the adventure of another. Inherited will. And if something ever happened to Ichiro Oda, you have to wonder if anyone would be able to finish the story for him. The theories we make struggle to interpret the Poneglyphs, and every now and then some of us stumble on the voice of all things, hoping to uncover what the One Piece really is, while the rest of you would rather not know the answer. 
instead choosing to just enjoy the adventure. But as usual, we will have to wait and see. Don't forget to like the video, comment with your thoughts below, and subscribe. You can also find me on Twitter at the following address, at Vinland Ragnar. My Twitter page is on the screen. Also check out my spoiler channel called Vinland, where I'll be covering the One Piece spoilers as well as turning your comments into videos. And check out the One Piece news channel, D News, where I'll be covering news in the One Piece community. Again, links will be in the description box and pinned in the comments section below. As always, there is more to come. Until next time.